Hey everyone, this is Susan Sandvik and um, and we'll be starting the meeting in just a minute. Hey everyone, this is Susan Sandvik um, and welcome to our webinar on how to create an online fundraising calendar. I just shared a PDF with everyone um, in the chat box. I will also be sending this PDF to everyone um, after our class is done, but I know we will reference it at some point um, and it's a great little reference tool for everyone. So, um, so that is available to you. And let me just move some things around and then we will uh, get started. We are recording this call um, or this webinar. And so um, you will be able to have the slide deck as well as the PDF that I just sent to you guys in chat and, um, and, and the recording available to you for future use. All right, so um, let me just make sure that everything is set up. We're still getting some people in. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, see what we can do. What I will do, just so you guys know, is I will also, I'll send the PDF if you do not have it in the chat box, I'll send the PDF at the, uh, the Q&A at the end as well. So that way we make sure that every single person gets the PDF, but you also, like I said, um, will be uh, emailing you a link um, to the PDF after this. Um, so don't worry, you're gonna get you're gonna get everything that you need. All right. So I wanna uh, I see that we keep getting more people, but I also want to manage the time. So why don't we just get started and um, and. Hopefully you guys are gonna learn a little something and leave here feeling inspired um, for some, so you can create some online giving event calendars. All right, so hopefully everybody's able to see my screen. I haven't gotten any complaints yet and, and you guys seem to be able to hear me. So uh, let's get started. All right, so here I am, Susan Sandvik. I'm new on staff here at Mighty Cause, started in October and I'm the community development specialist. Um, I have come here with over 20 years fundraising experience. I've worked, I've been on boards. I've worked for teeny tiny local organizations that are, um, I've worked for startups and I've worked for um, national headquarters of huge organizations um, for their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising events. So I uh, run the gamut, I've been in your shoes and, um, and hopefully I'm gonna give you some tips that have actually worked for me, as well as at organizations that I've been at, and um, and give you some little inspiration on how to make this not so much, it doesn't feel as much um, like work as it can be kind of fun to create these calendars. All right. All right, so now you met me, now let's meet Mighty Cause. <laughs> um, since we have a lot of different people here at Mighty Cause, um, that that are at different levels of my cause. I know we have some advanced subscribers, people who've worked at Giving Days, but we also have some people that have never um, that are uh, aren't as familiar with our platform. So, 
Mighty Cause, formerly Razoo, has been serving nonprofits since 2006. Um, we have raised over a half a billion dollars for nonprofits um, in that time period. Um, and we are um, an all-in-one platform designed for nonprofits. But one thing that uh, we really offer, um, we offer different types of event campaigns like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, team campaigns, individual fundraisers, embeddable donor forms. Um, and then we also, not only do we make the fundraising easy for the end user, but we also make managing it easy for our nonprofits with reporting um, and technology that will help you um, be successful fundraisers. So if you're interested in learning more about Mighty Cause, once again, I will send you uh, that PDF and you can set up a demo as well as um, just check, out, check us out a little bit more. All right, um, so here's our agenda. First thing that we're going to do, so, so we're basically, I wanna make sure that you have a plan on how to set up an event calendar. And you can start small by just setting up an event calendar for one month or um, the spring campaign, or you might get inspired and you wanna do a full year. Um, but I wanna make sure that you have um, some knowledge and some ideas on how to do this. And cause I know it can seem very overwhelming and this is a great way to break it all up. So in the agenda, we're going to tell, talk about how you can gather uh, key dates from all of um, your key um, stakeholders at your organization. We're gonna talk about giving seasons. Every season <laughs> has its own uh, flair. And so I wanna make sure that you are aware of some of the trends um, and, and, um, and how people actually donate and when to maybe think more about stewardship. Um, so that way um, you're, you're not just constantly asking, you're also telling people how they are making an impact with their donations and how you can thank them. Um, then um, I'm gonna teach, we're gonna talk about how you can um, get a list of projects and fundraising needs from your programming people. Um, so that way you can kind of, uh, people like to give to specific events, um, to specific causes, to specific scholarships or little projects that you're doing. And, and this is a way that you can kind of think about, okay, now we have some dates that we can do fundraising, like what could we fundraise for and, and hopefully make an impact. Um, I will show you some creative ways how to round out your fundraising calendar with smaller um, online events um, and, <clears throat> and give you some resources on how to kind of create some of these smaller uh, online events. And finally, how you can use Mighty Cause to uh, create your online fundraising campaigns. We're going to end it with a Q&A. Um, I'm going to be very honest about my... <laughs> My teaching style is I'm not very good. Um, I, I'm not very good about checking the chat boxes while I'm speaking. I just am not one of those people who can multitask that way. Um, so if you can um, save your questions, you can put them in chat and I'll go through them um, at the end of, of during the Q&A. But if you want to save your questions and then just save them for Q&A, I might end up answering them somewhere along the line. So just have a piece of paper ready, keep your questions there, and I'll try to do my best to make sure I answer your questions at the end of the webinar. All right. So first thing we're going to talk about is gathering data. You already have something at your organization. You have, you, you can, um, you, you, I'm sure that you've had events, that you've had, um, you have different types of events, you have goal setting times, you have board meetings, you have all these things that you're going to want to put into a calendar. And so this is a way that you can gather all that information. One big suggestion I always give to people is look at the calendar year and your fiscal year. I know when you're at a nonprofit, you sit there and you think about your fiscal year, and that is so in very important to you, but the world thinks of a year in calendar year. <laughs> so, so it's a good to kind of step back and think, okay, let's think about us as uh, Sue, the nonprofit professional, and Sue, the human being who is going to be donating to these causes. Um, and so 
just make sure you, you do that. Then um, write down all of your important dates of events and planned deadlines, things you know are going to be on your calendar. If you don't, if you, let's say you have, you know that in the fall, you always do your gala, um, and, but you don't have that date yet, kind of just pencil it in into an area of your calendars. It, this helps you not only with making sure um, that you're not putting too much into one month, <laughs> you have to kind of also think to yourself, okay, we're gonna have to implement everything. Can we, um, let's make sure that we, have time and we are aware that, okay, that's walk season, that's gala season, that's whatever this is season. And, and also by putting in and penciling all that in, you're making sure that no events just suddenly sneak up on you. You're, um, you're prepared, you're thinking of communications plans, you're thinking of all of that and, and all of the pieces that go into planning an event. But things that we want to do when we're really thinking about a calendar is we want to talk about the fundraising campaign start and start and end dates. You can kind of put in your what you think a, a different fundraising campaigns um, should, when they should be, and and um, and don't don't just think of them as just one date, but think about the whole communications plan that you might want to implement, um, and 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 how you're going to market. Um, whatever fundraising event you have. Um, you want to make sure that all of your specific fundraising events are there. You want to make sure your donor stewardship events are there. So if you have a volunteer appreciation, you do thankathons or annual banquets or whatever, you want to put those in there. If you don't have anything that is donor stewardship type event, even if it's just a mailing campaign or a social media campaign where you're going to thank everybody every day in November, start thinking that way. Start thinking of ways that you can thank all of the important people that donate, that volunteer, that um, support your organization. But you also want to always think about when you're thanking people, it's a great opportunity to tell people about the impact their donations made to your organization. And you can brag about what you do at your organization. So just kind of, a, it's a way to kind of think a little bit differently, but it's um, rather than thinking about how do we just keep asking for money, just think about that stewardship. You wanna put those board meetings in there. Your board should be, it should have your back. You, they should know what's going on at your organization, that you have different fundraising things. And hopefully some of your board members are going to help you with, if you do decide to do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, if you do decide that you want uh, to challenge the board to try to get 10 donors um, by a certain event or whatever. So you just wanna make sure that those meetings are um, in your key dates for your calendars. And that way you can kind of know, all right, if we set this up here, we can ask the board at this meeting. Um, and finally, put in your goal setting dates. You need, you need a, a way to look at where you are in fundraising and to if all of a sudden you realize, okay, that grant didn't come in. So we're gonna end up being you know $25,000 short this year. You do have an opportunity to pivot and change and try to think about ways that you can raise that money um, other ways. And online fundraising is a great way to kind of, you uh, we all see it. Uh, somebody says, we didn't end up, getting this grant we need to raise this much money can you help us there are those those times where people admit their shortfalls and they end up making even more money um, online because they suddenly have a lot of people that are forwarding and amplifying that message and getting donations to come in so you make sure that you um, once you set up a calendar you're constantly like looking at it and pivoting adding things switching things around it makes it um, much easier for your organization to use. All right, let's talk about giving seasons. Giving, everybody, um, a lot of people think about, when I say giving season, a lot of people think about Christmas and the holiday season. And it is very true. Nearly a third of all giving takes place between Giving Tuesday, which is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and December 31st. So if you're not focusing uh, somehow, some way on getting donations, um, throughout your giving season, that is a missed opportunity and you really need to, to make sure that you're a part of that. So those people 
who um, who are in the giving spirit are giving to your organization as well. But there are some like unspoken <laughs> types of little trends that we have noticed at all nonprofits. And so we wanna make sure that you're aware of some of these other opportunities. Um, January and February, because giving season was so big and you just finished that up in, in December 31st, it's a great opportunity to um, show your impact. Thank all those people who gave to you during that time, but talk about what you're going to do in the next upcoming year. Um, thank everybody, show them um, the impact of their gifts and another easy way and an excuse to make sure that you send them something is this is a great opportunity to, to resend them receipts or add up all of their donations for them so they have the um, documents available to them so they can do their taxes. It's just a, it's a nice little added bonus, but it's a nice excuse to go and, and, um, and thank your donors. Um, in the spring, spring, spring and fall are very large fundraising seasons. It seems like one is usually at most nonprofits. One of them is your, uh, a large event. And another one is when you do a big mailing. Um, and, and they change for, for every organization, but it's definitely a, the trend. And, um, and so you want to make sure that you kind of keep yourself open for that because people are used to, it's a great time to have uh, galas and walks and the weather's a little bit nicer and it's not too hot, not too cold, all of that. So um, you kind of make sure that you um, put your, your fundraising events in your calendar and then you can work around those. Um, summer. A lot of people, um, we there's a lot of organizations, their staff gets shorter hours during the summers, their board doesn't meet during the summers. We all know how you know schools are out and people go on vacations and it is really a difficult time to, um, to get a hold of people. So it's not a, a great time to go and try to send out your one annual appeal in the middle of summer, but it is a great time, once again, small, little bits of donor stewardship. Make sure that you're telling people about the impact that your gifts have made, um, touch base with your donors so they know that their donation went to something important. And then take this opportunity to recharge and get you ready for the next giving season. Um, a lot of times you get a little extra time during the summer and this would be a great time to um, invest your time wisely. So that way your fall and the end of the year um, run smoothly as possible. All right, next, we want you guys to make sure you assess your fundraising needs. So make a list of all the projects and fundraising needs that you can think of. Take a, like maybe have a meeting with, um, if you have a programming department and if you, I've been at the nonprofits where I've been all the departments. So just, it's just make a list of things that you think people might wanna fund. Um, sometimes when you take a look at your actual budget, you can actually, it's clear as day on some of these things. You might have um, um, scholarship programs or um, a summer camp that you need funded, or, you know, there's definite things that you can see that people would be very interested in giving to, and you can showcase um, what you do at your organization and give them the opportunity to target their donations a little bit more. Um, other things that people will end up looking at is um, an example is, as I worked at an organization, it was a tutoring organization for kids uh, uh, reading and literacy for first to third graders. So that way that they're, they can, they, their reading is up to, to what they need to be to get into fourth grade, um, which is when you start, you stop, uh, what do they say? You stop learning to read and now you have to read to learn in fourth grade and so i worked for this organization we had this tutoring program at the end of the the school year we would give all of the kids a little backpack full of books so they didn't get the brain drain during the summer um and it, and it was just kind of lumped into our budget um and it became very easy for us we created some giving online giving days we said, uh, we broke it down. You can, this much buys a book, this much buys a backpack, this much buys whatever. And we got 
that fully funded all of the books, all the backpacks, all of the everything fully funded in one day and a, a giving campaign because all of the tutors sent it out and it became kind of a fun thing and we got a matching gift and it was just, it was a really fun, exciting thing. But it all came from us looking and saying, okay, this is kind of something, a fun act, a fun uh, program that people would want to fund. And so that's how we thought of this. Um, so, and then look at important dates and use them for, for fundraising. So I think if I remember correctly, when we did that reading, the, the giving day, we picked like some random a, a read a kid a book day or you know national library week or something I don't remember what it was but we that's what we how we picked our day was we and I'll be showing you how to do that in just a bit but it all kind of worked together we were able to fundraise for a specific project um, we got it fully funded and it was all uh, done on a giving day and it was done and it literally did not take that much work to put everything together all right, so let's create op opportunities to give. This is a way that you can round out your calendar. We've talked about now the, those big events that you wanna do for your calendars um, that are going to be a part of your calendars. Now, let's add some small online events that you can create using Mighty Cause um, and, and let's round it out so we can add some of that. You know, Getting $1,000 here, $1,000 there, that adds up. So you want to make sure that you kind of have a little bit of a plan about it. Um, and then at, if you need to, like, as I said, if you need to pivot and raise a little bit more money, you kind of have an idea of opportunities where maybe we can do a fundraiser here. Maybe we can do something here. Um, some tools that you can definitely use is the spring planner that I provided in your chat box. I'll provide it again if you were unable to get it. And you will be getting that spring planner at the um, um, in a follow up email after this class, along with, as I said, the slide deck and the video. Um, we're going to talk about nationaltoday.com. It's a great website, it has tons of awareness days, um, as well as fun little holidays. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in a bit. And then I'm just um, going to give you a little bit of inspiration on how to maybe uh, get creative with days and have some fun with this. All right, so the spring planner that I put together for you, um, what we basically have done is this a calendar from February to May. And um, I went through um, um, the National Today website, found some giving days, giving months, holidays, all of that, and kind of created an overall can calendar for you guys. Let me tell you right now, it's a lot easier when you have you can hone in on your own mission and your own cause and look for those days. And and it actually and it's a lot more fun as well. Um, but I just wanted you to know that I I it, it's just a sample. Like I definitely recommend you go and you kind of create this yourself. But what I did was I created some interesting days and opportunities for um, for people to fundraise. Um, one thing in March that I put here is March Madness. A lot of people create these little fundraising opportunities around March Madness, um, you know, and and it's it is an opportunity. The Super Bowl is an opportunity. Um, St. Patrick's Day, Mardi Gras, all of these things are definite opportunities that are throughout the year as an excuse to fundraise. Um, and so you just, it just gave you a couple ideas for dates. Um, I also, if, um, just so you know, on each of these PDFs, if I give you an opportunity, uh, a link on each one of them, if you do want to set up a demo or talk to me, um, more about this, I, um, that's always available for you there. And then if you scroll down on each of the pages, um, I also included awareness months, the link to national today, a link to how to get things started. Um, if you wanted to start creating a fundraising campaign, and then I created a little, uh, fundraising tip. So, as I said, I had this, I created this, there's, um, it's in that PDF document, um, but it's for February through May. 
Um, and, and each one, there's definitely links to um, great fundraising tools, resources, um, participant toolkits, all sorts of things, and gives you some ideas on some fundraising days. So definitely use this as a resource. Uh, as I said, I use nationaltoday.com um, as a resource of where to get come up with some of these dates. National.com uh, um, is, they put together all kinds of dates, not just cause holidays. They, um, there's National Pizza Day and National um, Friendship Day and Sister Day. And you'll see it all of a sudden, you'll see morning talk shows. They'll, rec they'll talk about that it's some kind of holiday that you didn't know about. You'll see it in social media when people start posting pictures of their pets because it's National Rescue Dog Day. Um, and so this is just a great way that you can learn about the days that impact you and fun days that you can use um, to, um, to, to, as an excuse to either fundraise or um, recognize your volunteers or steward any of your donors. So when you go to National Today, what I did is the screenshot here is of the cause holidays, but you see that there's calendar and there's a bunch of dates that you can go into. Once you, you go in, you can click on one of those dates. It opens up um, to a specific date and it gives you actually, and I didn't put it all in here, but it's pretty interesting because if you scroll down, it'll give you information on where, when the date was created and what the date truly means and, and um, gives you a little bit of history about that date. So it's always fun reading and it gives you, it might give you some inspiration on um, an excuse to fundraise. Like for instance, on March 14th, it's crowdfunding days. So why not do a crowdfunding, um, <laughs> create a crowdfunding campaign and, and just acknowledge it and see if you make any money. All right, um, as I said, you can use that, uh, the resource that I provided for you, you can use National Today. This is also an opportunity to just kind of really get creative and have fun. And it might be a great opportunity if you have a staff or a board that loves to kind of think outside the box, have a brainstorming session, just meet for an hour and, and just try to think of fun ways that you can um, um, utilize um, the resources that you have and create little fundraising opportunities. Examples can be, you know, as simple as, on like Mother's Day, you can um, direct people to your, your website and say that they can uh, make a dedication to their mother and give a gift um, to your cause um, in honor of your mother on Mother's Day. Um, as I said, the um, National Today has a bunch of days that are around food. <laughs> so there's definite taco days and pizza days and all of that. So not only would it be fun to kind of think about, well, okay, on pizza day, well, how are we celebrating it at our organization? Of course, you can create a pizza night fundraiser. You can talk to a pizzeria and ask them to give you a portion of the proceeds for every pizza sold that night. There's all sorts of fundraising things, but it's also a great excuse. Use National Pizza Day to order pizza for your staff and feed them at lunch or have a volunteer appreciation party or whatever it is, um, you know, you, you have a little, it gives you an excuse to do a little reach out um, to your donors, your, your volunteers, your key stakeholders and, and, and have a little fun with that. Um, some people get really creative using the actual dates so an example is challenge your donors to get three $23 do donations in honor of March 3rd, 2023. <laughs> um, you know, these are like little kind of fun little challenges, but if you make it, if you put things like this on social media, you give them a call to action, you lead them to um, a place where they can donate and you make this super simple for people. These are the type of things that I definitely have taken action on. I know I just recently, a friend of mine, her son's kid was doing jump rope for heart and they wanted to get seven donations on the seventh. And so uh, seven, seven dollar donations on the seventh or something like that, because that's his luck, his favorite number. And so I made a seven dollar donation on Facebook. 
Um, sometimes there's just a lot of people who they just want a quick call to action. They think it's clever and this definitely works for them. Um, think about, put some of your dates that are important to your organization and make sure that those are on the calendar. There are places where it's, you know, learn about your, the history of your organization, the founders days. Um, if you have um, awards or um, scholarships or something named after somebody, go and investigate who this person was and then and then like maybe have a, a, a crowdfunding day uh, for a scholarship in, um, for that honoree on their birthday. It gives you an opportunity so that way their memory or 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 um, whoever you're honoring, it gets the recognition, that constant recognition. That's why you named it after that person. But then it also, once again, it's another excuse to fundraise on a specific day. And then, um, and then I really recommend that you challenge your board, your staff, everybody to fundraise on their birthdays. It's an easy way to, um, everybody could do some crowdfunding for your organization and it's an easy way for them to make a little bit of money just on based on their uh, a day that's important to them. All right. So now you've sat down, you brainstormed everything, you created this great calendar. Now what? <laughs> well, you can create your fundraising campaigns in Mighty Cause. So um our subscribers can create multiple different types of campaigns, but we also, you can create as many campaigns as you want. I know at some different platforms, you get charged based on how many campaigns you have. You can have hundreds and hundreds of campaigns. So there's no um, extra charge in uh, creating them as long as you are a subscriber. We also have three types of key campaign pages. We have fundraisers, teams, and events, or as, I like to call it peer-to-peer. -peer. A fundraiser page, um, this comes with your essential um, subscription and some people have, um, it, based on if how they came to our organization, they may have their an, a, essential subscription grandfathered in because they came in through a specific giving day or um, they, they were with us years ago and you're grandfathered in, so you already have essential tools. Um, if you don't know what you have, you can always check in with me <laughs> and I'll let you know um, what, um, what subscription plan you currently have and what your options are. You just set up a demo and I'll, I'll chat with you and see what you have. Um, but um, your, our essential subscribers can create a, multiple fundraiser pages. Um, I think fundraiser pages are great if you want to, if you have a specific campaign, a specific project, a specific fund that you want to fundraise for. And you know, all right, I have, this is our financial goal. We want to raise this money in this timeline. And here's a quick little description of what these people, the impact their donations will make um, and what that campaign's purpose is. Um, I gave you a little bit of a screenshot. I'm trying to think of like what shows up above the fold so you can see the simplicity of our fundraising pages, but it gets to the, the heart of the matter and it gets people to donate. So you can see this, um, this page, it's for a new animal shelter. There is a line, if you scroll down, there's, you have a place to tell a little bit more of your story. You have a place to put in a little bit more information, but really when people wanna donate, you wanna make it very simple for them. You can see what the goal is. You can see how much they've raised towards the goal and you make it easy for them to donate or share this page. So this is what our basic fundraiser pages are. Um, using our tools, I'm, I'm not lying when I say that you can create this within five, 10 minutes. Um, as long as you, the gathering of the information that I tell you about is the hardest part. So um, that is our fundraising pages. And you can like you use some of those dates to create these fundraising pages and then market uh, this, these fundraising pages um, in social media or in email. Next up is team pages. Team pages are best for organize, organizing groups of people fundraising towards a collective goal. Um, so 
think about it when you're, um, if you're in a 5k, you get all those corporate teams, you get all those individual family teams, you get all of that. Those can be all teams. You can have your board go against your, um, your staff. You can have, um, you can break up your staff into departments and have them all fundraise. You can break up your board into departments and have different teams. You can do all sorts of opportunities. It, um, if you create a team page, uh, it comes with a leaderboard and that leaderboard is great for showcasing your progress of your campaign, but also it inspires a little friendly competition among your teams. So um, this is an opportunity to, if you wanna take those individual fundraisers and kind of keep building onto them, this is definitely a resource that you might wanna use. Finally, we have our events page. This is um, a part of our advanced subscriptions. Um, and this is more of the large scale peer to peer fundraising campaigns. So this is a large event that you will that can consist of multiple solo fundraisers, as well as multiple fundraising teams. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit different. Um, here, the goal is still there. The deadline is there. There's ability to donate. You can have a matching gift that's going on and it pops up on the screen here. But now you have the ability to register for this fundraiser. And then you can, add, when you register for the fundraiser, you can create fundraising templates that um, your fundraisers can use to create their own individual fundraising pages, as well as they can be a part of a team. And and then you can see that we have um, a participant list that include all of your fundraisers and how much they're raising. It's all very public facing. And then if you clicked here, you could see the teams and how they're doing as well. It's just a way that kind of, um, it's all the tools rolled up into one. And so if you are an advanced subscriber, a lot of times it's, it's much easier to create an event and not use all of the resources than to create a, uh, a small fundraiser and realize, oh shoot, I really wanted that to be an event. Um, so just kind of think about it before you start creating things, but we uh, definitely have the tools and resources to help you create a really amazing peer-to-peer um, uh, -peer fundraising campaign in Mighty Cause. Um, other things that we have to offer in Mighty Cause, um, I feel like our, uh, our fundraising tools are very, um, intuitive and um, and and where we work within any kind of budget or experience level. Um, it helps a lot with donation processing and we talked about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. We integrate with things like Salesforce, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Eventbrite, all sorts of different um, other nonprofit platforms that will help you um, raise maximum funds. Um, the donor data management, I obviously I couldn't get into it, but we have a lot of great reports and very easy donor management tools in our systems. And, um, and you get some great uh, fundraising analytics that will help you strategize for future years. So now I went through everything and, and now we'll open it, the floor for Q&A. Let me go through um, some of the Q&A questions as well as the chat questions and see what we can do there. So um, let's see here. Does your platform have an event portion to it for events, ticket sales, and auctions? We do not have auctions. We do have ticket sales. If you create an event uh, within our um, the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform, we do integrate with Eventbrite and that makes it very easy for people to um, separate the, the registration fees or ticketing fees from the fundraising fees. So you, um, you, get, you can get the ticketing prices, registration fees through Eventbrite, it integrates with our system and then it, it goes back to um, um, Mighty Cause and you can create the fundraising, uh, um, pages for for your walk, run, gala, whatever it is. Um, text message availability. We have a text to give program. Um, text to give, it's, it's not, um, 
what it is, is it, we provide you with a 1-800 number and you can create a keyword. Um, so you can say, you know, uh, you can have things up at your event that says text this 1-800 number with the keyword uh, reading is awesome. I don't know. <laughs> um, and, and, and when you do that, the um, donation page that you connect with that keyword will be automatically sent to that person's phone. So it's not um, a texting capability of, you know, sending multiple text messages out, but it is a great resource. Uh, and we actually on, on one of the, um, the pages of the, um, the planner, I even have, a, I, there is a, I recently did a blog that talked about ways that you can um, integrate online giving into your live events. So you can do that using text to give QR codes and all of that. So you can lead people very simply to the proper donation pages or, or any other tools that you might want to use. Uh, do you have integrations with either Donor Perfect, Kindful, Bloomerang? Um, I, we do not have an automatic integration, but we do integrate with Zapier. And so I know that no matter what, you can always create a Zap. I don't know how to use Zapier. I'm not a Zapier professional, but I do know that it, because we have that integration with Zapier, it makes it much easier to integrate that way. The other thing I will be very honest, because I, once again, been in your shoes, um, exporting and importing with CSV files is very sim simple in our system. It's very, very easy to export any report automatically into a CSV file. And uh, just having that ability with so many databases makes life a lot easier. And so we always have that availability. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep scrolling down. I have a fundraiser scheduled for the future in April and want to use a QR code for it in Mighty Cause. Is there a way to start a campaign later? Um, I need the link for the QR code for printing purposes, but don't want to start a campaign yet. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I think you do have to have a, a live event. Um, you have to at least start your event. Um, um, but because you need you need a URL in order to create the QR code. Um, so as far as I know, you have to at least start the campaign enough so you can get that URL. Um, um, but we can definitely, if you want to shoot me an email, we can definitely um, go into this a little bit more and I can research a little bit more. But as far as I know, I think that you have to, you don't have to publish your event, but you have to have at least started creating an event in order to make sure that you have that URL. And that the reason why, um, and I think one of the reasons why it's so important to have that URL um, started is because let's let's say you work for the Alzheimer's Association, and um, you know obviously you're going to have to. There's so many Alzheimer's associations all around the country. And the, they probably step on each other for different URLs. And so you want to make sure that your, your URL actually works. Um, but that's more of a, I'll have to look into that. But I completely understand the printing purposes and all of that as well. But uh, let's see what we can do. All right. So I'm going to go into the, that was uh, questions that people put in the q and I'm going to go into chat. So um so if you if you if you don't have any more questions, um, one thing I will do right now because somebody mentioned um, about not being able to see the spring monthly calendar, so I'll put that in to the webinar chat once more, um, and then as I said, we'll send a follow up email as well. But I um, I just want to make sure that everybody has that, and if you want to leave at any time um, and not listen to the questions, I completely understand, and you can do that as well. All right, so I just shared the spring monthly calendar to everyone, so feel free to download that, and we'll have that available to you in other resources as well, but it's it's um, that and the National Today. I can't tell you how much it, it ends up being a really fun process. 
because then you you laugh at some of the days that people have and you suddenly make sure that like margarita day and martini days are a part of your um your plan <laughs> all right um hopefully everybody else uh <laughs> was uh muted and and it was able to see everything so um and uh, because somebody wasn't able to do that so i hope they were able to catch us um there is going to be a recording we are going to send something after that um i will be sending the um i said that i'll we'll make sure the slide deck the recording the pdf will all be in your mailboxes i believe the email is scheduled to send tomorrow um i'll find out uh directly uh what the status is but you should get it either today or tomorrow um a lot of people are asking about the <laughs> i'm loving this by the way i a lot of people are asking about the recordings and everything but then i love that you guys started going into margarita day so i like that you guys are thinking the same way i do um uh let me we'll make sure I'll, I'll make sure that anybody who put your email addresses i'll make sure that you are um on the distribution list um um how can you add donations that are donated direct that are not directly donated directly into mighty cause if you have a subscription you can enter in offline donations so they show up on your calendars I mean, on your calendars, on your, uh, um, um, now I can't even, thermometer, <laughs> I had calendar in my brain, I couldn't think of the word thermometer. They'll show up on, on your totals and all of that. Um, but obviously the, the donations aren't processed. It's just a CSV file that you can upload into it, your system. So that way um, all of that shows up on public facing events um and then and we can we definitely have instructions on how to upload and if you look up um using our resources if you look up um offline donations you'll get instructions but i can if i can also send you instructions on that uh, do we integrate with blackboard it right there that's another one um a it's through the zapier product <laughs> so um we don't have a direct integration but we do have a way that you can integrate if you use Zapier. And as I said, um, um, downloading and uploading CSV files is a wonderful thing as well. Um, uh, last year, someone with Mighty Cause helped with flyers and graphics to raise awareness for our giving day. So we do, we have our giving days, which are large community events. Um, and we, that's, uh, Definitely, I know that they create a lot more um, um, graphics and design type things with those giving days. You know, Colorado gives, give Minnesota, uh, the, these types of days, they're, they're big, huge things. And, and I know that each giving day, um, we end up providing a lot of tools and resources, as well as uh, your community foundation sometimes creates tools and resources for you. So hopefully, um, that is what you're talking about. Um, as for uh, creating anything for a local giving day, like what like what I'm saying is, if you want to do a margarita night um, on National Margarita Day, um, that we uh, we might not be able to help with flyers and graphics. Um, one thing that we are starting to do a little bit more of here is um, I, I created. Um, a, um, uh, template in Canva. And so we might start using that more and more to give you guys um, some more resources that kind of integrate well with your online giving structure. Um, but um, if you uh, the, if you are a subscriber and you have an account manager, if you just write to your account manager, you can definitely, uh, the, I always say the worst thing you, we ever can say to you is no. <laughs> so if you ask, you know, somebody might be able to help you get you a resource, get you whatever you need to create uh, flyers and graphics that you might need. Um, and then you asked about resending the PDFs and um, okay, it, I think we got everything. <laughs> um, if I didn't answer your question, I'll be going through your questions 
um, after the class is over. It looks like you, I think it's a lot of people just making sure they're on the email list <laughs> and, um, and which is good because that means that you guys are interested. Um, and so I will, um, we will definitely be having more webinars, especially if you have specific giving days in your local area. Um, there, look for those webinars um, and, and um, stay tuned if this, I think based on everybody's response, I will probably do more webinars to help you guys get ready for summer and fall and year long planning. So um, glad that you enjoyed the class. If you have any questions, you guys um, have my uh, contact information and uh, look for my email with uh, the PDFs and the slides and all of that soon. Okay. Have a great day, everybody.